history will be made in the Bellator cage when MMA legend Chet Conga fights in the first ever major MMA event in his native country of France. After 43 fights in seven countries, the darkness throws down with hard-hitting Tim Johnson in our heavyweight main event. Plus, the one and only MVP is Michael Benham Page looks to move one step closer to a world title shot as he takes on the undefeated Scotsman, Ross Houston, from the capital city of Paris. This is Bellator MMA, live and free on Channel 5. historic night for Bellator MMA. We are number one, the very first major organization to hold an event in the country of France. It is great to be in Paris on Channel 5, where later tonight, we will have a heavyweight main event featuring Czech Congo. Born in Paris, raised in France. Tonight, certainly a dream come true. His opponent is Tim Johnson. And Tim Johnson is on a bit of a roll. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. Welcome to Bellator MMA right here on Channel 5. For Czech Congo, he has had to wait 43 fights to fight at home. For Tim Johnson, he entered the Bellator cage a few years back and was rudely welcomed by Czech Congo. He wouldn't mind getting a little bit of revenge and redemption. My partner is always Big John McCarthy, and let's talk about Tim Johnson first because this man has certainly accelerated his game. Oh my God, right now he is on a hot streak, and when we talk about fighters that are dangerous, it's fighters that are confident, and right now, Tim Johnson is a confident fighter. Had a huge win against the undefeated Tyrell Fortune, knocking him unconscious in the first round, and then came out and starched Matt Mitrione again in the first round. This is right now Tim Johnson's hot streak in his career. He has been doing so well in the cage, and he expects to take that and bring that to France and put it on Czech Congo tonight. All kinds of emotions for Czech Congo. A dream come true, as I mentioned. There might be some tears as he makes his walk to the cage. He's going to have those jitters, but he is going to be excited to put on a show in front of his home country thing. Think about this, Mike. Think about being a professional athlete who has never been able to actually participate in the sport that you have chosen in your home country. After a, a career of now 44 fights, yeah. he finally gets the chance to perform in front of his countrymen. It's got to be special. We have called a ton of his fights, but none have been this one. Czech Congo, what does tonight mean to you? you know, what I mean for me is, uh, is the best things ever. You know, I used to fight all, all over the world, you know. And I used to be dedicated for the case, you know. MMA was great, and today, I mean, it's a uh, MMA. You bring a better time bring MMA in France. So it's going to be a really emotional. But I'm going to deliver an explosive fight for you guys. Czech Congo holds the Bellator heavyweight records for fights with 15, for wins with 12. Just a couple of days shy of two years. The first time Tim Johnson and Czech Congo met, they will meet again in Paris in our main event right here on Channel 5. It will be a special moment for Czech Congo. All right, let's get it down to our fight desk. We check in with our own Gareth Davies and SBG Ireland's unbeaten Bellator fighter, Liam McCourt. Well, welcome here to the Accor Arena. There is so much anticipation for the arrival of Czech, Congo, and Timothy Johnson in the cage. He's been cool, calm, and collected all week. He's an incredible figure, built like a gladiator. With me tonight 
Leah McCourt, the Bellator featherweight fighter. Leah, you've headlined in Dublin, Ireland. What's he going to be feeling like tonight, Jet Congo? Yeah, you know, I was lucky to headline so early in my career. I can only imagine what is going through his head tonight. You know, he's a he's an icon in French MMA. He's he's been there, done that. He, he's so experienced, and finally, you know, he's he's back in France. He's been emotional this week. He's he's excited, and he wants to come out and put on a performance worthy of uh, you know fighting in his hometown. And he's rematching, of course, Timothy Johnson, who he beat almost exactly two years ago. Timothy Johnson has been on a great win streak since then. Two terrific knockouts. They both look fantastic at the way in Czech Congo, always in fantastic shape. But Timothy Johnson means business here. Can he spoil the party in Paris, Leah? Yeah, you know, Timothy looks like a different fighter. You know, he said before that uh, in the previous fight, he he wasn't ready to take Czech's power. He was didn't believe in himself. He didn't have confidence. But now you can see in his last two fights, he's sitting down in his punches. He has confidence. And I think he's going to bring that confidence into tonight's fight. I think the fact that he knocked out those last two guys, Tyrell Fortune and Matt Mitrione, and Mitrione was only in August, remember, during lockdown. You can see how he's carrying himself at the moment. Yeah. He is so confident. He really believes in himself. He's got his game together against two very, very fine heavyweights. Two first round knockouts. But we're set to kick off our night here with two featherweights. RB Mezhidov against Saul the Hangman Rogers. I cannot wait for this fight. It's going to be explosive. Take it away, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, making his walk to the cage from Chechnya and Austria, Arby Metzidov. The Alpha Wolf, and I quote, fighting for Bellator is a big chance to shine and I will shine. I want to show the world that I am ready for a big league like Bellator. 13 career victories, winner of nine of his last 10 fights, Big John. He is a very good stand-up fighter, Mike. His hands are good. Comes from a boxing background. You figure, growing up, he grew up partly in Chechnya and then moved to Austria, and he's learned how to fight in different venues of where his life has been, but they've all added up to this guy who is a terrific fighter overall. Making his Bellator debut during this historic occasion against the hangman, Saul Rogers. And as I mentioned, wants to make a name for himself immediately, and he can do so against a man as talented as his opponent in Saul Rogers. He's ready. When we talked to him earlier in the week, he was confident, but he was humble. He did say on this fight, much to your point, John, my boxing game is going to be my biggest advantage. I would say I'm better in the stand-up. I am the hungrier man. I will walk away with the win. Arby Medzvada. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from England, here comes Saul Rogers. Saul Rogers told us, I am going to march forward, throwing bombs. He's either going to be backed up against the fence, or he's going to be drawn into a striking war. Either way, it will be game over. Well, when you're talking about Saul Rogers, I'm telling you, I've been in the cage with this guy. This guy at 145 pounds, Mike, he is strong as an ox. He is physically dominant, and he overpowers most of his opponents. The one thing I will tell you is, you know, in his last fight, he almost played into the whole thing of, well, he went for a takedown, he didn't get it, I don't want to waste my energy, and he let Daniel Weichel trick him into fighting Daniel Weichel's fight instead of Sal Rogers' fight, and that's the one thing that Sal has talked about with this matchup. I will never let that happen again. I will fight my fight. If I don't get the takedown when I want it, I'll get it the second time, the third time, the fifth time, the tenth time. 
We start here on Channel 5 in the featherweight division. Our tail of the tape for this matchup between the Alpha Wolf and the Hangman. Both men with identical 13 and 3 records. Rogers, two years the elder of the Alpha Wolf. It is Metzvedov who will have a slight reach advantage. With the official introductions, here is Craig Steven. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, in attendance here at Cage Sides. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue à Paris. And at this time, a very warm welcome to you, the viewers, joining us live on Channel 5 and around the world. Bellator MMA continues with the Euro Series, and we are coming to you live from the Accor Arena, Paris, France. This is history in the making and Bellator MMA would like to thank the French Boxing Federation and the French MMA Federation for the honor to be the first MMA event recognized in France. And a special thank you to the Minister of Sport, Roxana Marachinan, for fighting to make the sport legal in France. So this is our co-main event. This is three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, time to meet the fighters. Firstly, in the blue corner, at five foot 10 and 146 pounds, his record, 13 wins, only three defeats, with nine wins by KO. He was born in Chechnya. He now fights out of Vienna, Austria. He is Arby, the Alpha Wolf, Metzi Dog. And across the Bellator cage in the red corner, also standing five foot ten, weighing in at 145.4 pounds. His professional record, also 13 wins, only three defeats, with nine wins inside the distance. Fighting out of Manchester, England, so the Hangman Rogers. A referee in charge, Mr. Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson, our referee for this featherweight fight. From Paris, France, Saul Rogers and Arby Medzvidov. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Ready? Ready? Hey. Here we go! Saul Rogers in the red gloves. The Alpha Wolf in the blue gloves comes flying to the center of the cage. Medzvidov thinking he's Jorge Masvidal going <laughs> after that knockdown. You got that right. Both men have very lethal hands. Well, no doubt RB has got the better hands. He's got really good boxing. You'll, you'll notice he's gonna utilize a jab that is effective. But Sal Rogers, when he's on his game, he doesn't play the other guy's game. He goes after getting close, and when he gets close, he locks his hand, he takes you down, and he grinds you into the ground. He ground and pounds with the best of them. He has a habit of choking people out too, big time. <laughs> he does that because you get to a point you got to turn away from him, and he just takes the opportunity. But this should be an outstanding matchup. Both of these guys want this fight bad. Third Bellator fight for Saul Rogers. The debut inside the Bellator cage for Medzidon. Beautiful takedown. Nice entry by Saul Rogers. Now the question is exactly where he has him. You can keep him in this position. Don't let him get his back towards the, the cage because he can use it to get himself back up. We'll see what Sal Rogers decides to do. Sal Rogers with eight wins by submission, all of them by a choke, all of them in the first round. See if he can add to that, because well, that is very impressive. And he has been you know, in this position he knows I can deal with anyone. He went against Ryan Hall, who is a jiu-jitsu genius, a guy that's a wizard. Put him on his back and just beat him up on the ground. He knows he can deal with anyone in this position. It's just a matter of 
taking his time, keeping the pressure on, and just wearing Arby out. When you look back at his amateur career and you do the numbers, he has a combined 17 wins by first round submission. Medvedov trying to fight that off as we get close to the midway point of round number one. And you see three big right hands yes. land on RB Medvedov. Those take their toll. You know, it's not that they're putting him out. It's not that he can't continue on. But after a while, they just start to wear you out. And just notice the position. This is what I love about Sal Rogers when he takes his opponent to the ground. Most of the time, he postures. He brings power on the shot. He doesn't do this little body, body head. He decides, OK, this is where I'm going to get my opening. I'm going to get some posture here, and I'm going to go after big shots that damage you and make it so I can put you away in the fight. As you mentioned, John, you, as a referee, have been in the cage with Saul Rogers on frequent occasion, and he has had success on frequent occasion with you there. He said, John was my lucky charm, <laughs> to which I said, Big John is a quite large leprechaun. <laughs> I'm nobody's lucky charm. He did it all himself, man. But you know, it's, it, it is amazing when you watch it and guys, ah, oh, he's Looking going for, for the choke here. Can he get another He's got one. a good chance at this Dars choke right here, Mike. Looking to add to those impressive numbers. Yeah, look at, he's got that tight. Arby can go out with this. It's actually an anaconda. He's bringing those hips in. He's trying, he should grab that leg. That leg will make a difference if he can pull just a little bit more. Tight. He's nice. got one anaconda finish already, John. Nice job by Mesvedov to just stick with it, fight it off. He's on the neck again. Mesvedov trying to control the wrist. And that was all smart fighting by both guys. Sal Rogers going for it at a certain point. Mesvedov putting up with that pressure and that pain. And then Rogers deciding, you know what? It's not going to happen. Don't force it. Let me relax. Let me go back to doing what I'm doing. Trying to lock uh, one he's going, in again. Going palm to palm on the rear naked choke, trying to slide the arm in between. That looks like it's tighter now. I can't see exactly. It, it is all over. Just like that. Another first round submission for Saul the Hangman Rogers. That is a big time win. And he did it like he was supposed to do it. Mike took his time, was patient, went after the submission, didn't get it, went back to doing what he needed to do to force the next one pushes that rear naked choke, slides the hand behind the neck, locks it in. Beautiful submission victory by the Hangman. Nine submission wins in his professional career. All chokes, all in the first five minutes. Unbelievable. You can see right here, you can, Arby's got the wrist, but just because you have the wrist doesn't mean you're trouble, because you can see Sal Rogers controlling the arm. He gets the hook, and he gets the arm around the neck, but it was the way he forced. He went from palm to palm on that rear naked choke to sliding that locking hand behind the neck and head. Here's the palm to palm. You see him squeezing, and then he decides, you know what, I'm going to lock this. He then takes it pushes his arm through that tiny space, moves his chin up, brings it through, locks his chin back on top of the arm, gets the squeeze. There's nothing Arby can do. He's either going to go to sleep or he's going to have to tap out a big time win for Sal Rogers. Got the chin, got the finish, gets the win the 14th of his career, the second as a Bellator fighter. To make it official, here is Craig Steven. Well, ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, Todd Anderson, referee, stops the contest, four minutes, 38 seconds of round number one. 
The winner by submission, rear naked choke from Manchester, England, saw the hangman Rogers. His fifth win by rear naked choke. Saul Rogers looking like the Saul Rogers that Big John talked about while he made his way to the cage. Congratulations to the hangman. He will visit with Gareth Davis inside the Bellator cage in Paris, France. Saul Rogers, you are back in the win column. How does it feel? It feels good. I told everyone what I was going to do. Take this guy out first round. He's never been submit submitted. I told everyone I'm going to take him out one round one, and I did what I said I was going to do. You've talked all week about unha how unhappy you were at your performance against Daniel Weichel. Your mentality's changed, hasn't it? 100%. All the stuff that was kind of distracting me outside of the cage. Everyone knows this is a mental game, so I address them problems and I come back stronger. This guy's no mug, you know what I'm saying? I was prepared to do three, uh, three rounds with him, but there was no doubt in my mind I was taking this guy out or stopping him with the punches or a submission, and I got the sub. You're going to have to wait to fight for the featherweight title, but who would you like to fight next, really? Do you know what? Anyone in that tournament, I want to be on standby, standby now. Do you know, I, I fought a rubbish fight against Vigil. If I fight that guy again, I'd destroy him. Do you know what I mean? This, this mindset now would destroy anyone in this, that tournament. So let Bellator know. I want to be on standby. There's a guy that get, I lost a close fight. I didn't get dominated like some of them other guys. So if anybody pulls out, call me up. I'm there. I want that belt. I want to take Pitbull out, and I want that belt. Huge congratulations, Saul the Thank Hangman you. Rogers. Thank you very much. Saul Rogers had a great expression that he used, a great quote as we talked to him earlier in the week. Hand on heart, he would be a different fighter tonight. He holds true to those words. Tour continues in a storm of huge fights in October. October the 15th, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Cyborg, Cyborg defending her women's Bellator featherweight title for the first time against Arlene Blenko. And two weeks later, Thursday night fights, remember? Gegard Mousasi against Douglas Lima for the vacant men's middleweight title. Liam McCourt, you have a huge interest in Cyborg versus Blenko. How does this fight go down? Yeah, you know, two brilliant strikers. Cyborg in her last performance, I think, was, was one of the best performances in her whole career. She absolutely dominated, you know, and Arlene's coming in. She, she's fought everybody as well. She's got some great wins, great striking. But look at the power in Cyborg's hand. She's so dangerous, so vicious. And when she, when she really lets loose, she's, she's hard to deal with. You know, if Arlene comes out and puts pressure on Cyborg, makes her feel her power, you know, and, and not let Cyborg be, be relentless and attack her, you know, it could be a good fight. That was the problem for Julia Budd there in those highs. But like you say, Arlene Blenko needs to meet fire with fire in this fight. We cannot wait for that one. Well, we're going to go over to the main event now, of course, of the night. And it's back to you, Goldie. Gareth, thank you very much. And that main event is the monumental moment that Czech Congo has waited 19 years, four months, and one day as a professional fighter for. His professional debut, June 10th, 2001. Seven different countries. This 
Tonight will be his 44th pro fight. One of those fights, Big John, was against Timothy Johnson, and it was Tim Johnson's Bellator debut. It was Tim Johnson's Bellator debut, but it did not go the way that he wanted to. And a lot of it was he was rushing in this fight. He was rushing at Congo, and that's something you can't do. You have got to take your time. One of the things that Congo is so good at is controlling the fight. He is outstanding at making you fight at his pace. Very few guys have been able to get him out of that. Tim Johnson needs to look at what occurred in that first fight, go back and say, all right, I made mistakes. I see where my mistakes are at, and now I'm gonna come at you in a much more mature fashion, a smarter fashion, and that's what he's been doing in his fights. Huge win against Tyrell Fortune, knocking out the unbeaten fighter. And then this ground and pound on Matt Mitrione. Look at the heavy shots that he starts landing here, Mike. Big, heavy shots. That's a big man with big shots. There's nothing Matt Mitrione can do. Tim Johnson is on a roll, and it all comes from moving to Vegas, training with other big heavyweights. He's getting confidence, and confidence is key to being successful. And he made that move after the first Czech Congo fight. He said in that first fight, he threw everything half speed. He said, I was almost scared to be in there with them. I had zero confidence in my striking. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the one we have all been waiting for. It's time for the big one. It's time for the big men. Please welcome now to the cage from the USA, Tim Johnson. That first fight, just a few days shy of two years ago. Tim Johnson, we just showed you the highlights. Back-to-back -back first round knockouts for the second time in his career. And for this fight, he did not have to cut weight at all. And we even noticed over our Zoom calls for the interviews, John, his face was leaner. He is in a great place mentally and physically right now. Well, he's got everything going in the right direction. Not only is his fight career going in the right direction, he's going to have a little girl in a couple days. So he's just wanting that to hold off so he can get done with his job here and take care of Congo and then go home and witness the birth of his little girl. But Tim Johnson right now, he knows because of the training he's been doing at Extreme Couture and sparring with guys like Francis Ngannou, he knows, you know what? If I can take that shot, I can take another guy's. I just have to be smart in how I take it and what I do. Don't get overextended. Don't jump into things. Take your time. Let the fight come to you, and good things will happen. Tim and his wife, Jessica, the baby is due on October 14th. He wouldn't tell us the baby girl's name. He did tell us when you spar with Nagano, it's like a real fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome home to Paris, France, Czech Congo! The dream has finally come true. Czech Congo has not lost in over five years. And as he walks to the Bellator cage, we will watch him do so and let him have this monumental moment.
chills, partner. You know, you could, one of the things that you really noticed in that walkout, Mike, I have been, I have seen most of Czech Congo's fights, and he's always a very calm, collected. He'll come in, just do his little salute with his hands. Yep. You could see the emotion, and you can see what this means to him. That was the most emotion he's ever shown before a fight. And justifiably so. Welcome home, Czech Congo. Fighting in Paris, France, in our main event. Our tail of the tape for this heavyweight rematch. Czech Congo, 30 professional victories, 45 years old, a decade the elder of Tim Johnson. Czech Congo will have a six inch reach advantage. And once again, with the official introductions, Craig Steven. Well, once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen in attendance here at Cage Side. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us across the UK, live on Channel 5 and around the world. Bellator MMA is very proud to bring you the Euro Series, and this is the main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. All sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gessner, Tribe Chief Lynn Malerba, President of Sports and Entertainment, Tom Cantone, and Director, Mr. Mike Mazzulli. At cage side, our three judges scoring, Jaron Vallel, Douglas Crosby, and Salvatore D'Amato. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in attendance here at cage side, and our viewers joining us live on Channel 5 and around the world. The officials are ready. The fighters are ready. Are you ready for the main event? <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing six foot three and weighing in at 259.8 pounds. His professional record, 14 wins, six defeats, 11 big wins inside the distance. From the town of Lamberton, Redwood County, Minnesota, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, here is Tim Johnson. And across the Bellator cage in the red corner, standing six foot four and weighing in at 245.6 pounds. His professional record, 30 wins, 10 defeats, two draws, one no contest, with 18 big wins inside the distance. This former Muay Thai world champion made his MMA debut in 2001. Tonight, Nearly, nine, nearly 20 years on, he fights for the very first time in his homeland. Ladies and gentlemen, from Paris, France, Czech, Congo! <laughs> Referee, Mr. Dan Mergliotta. All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules in the locker room. I want to pay my commands at all time. Protect yourselves at all time. You ready to touch gloves? Good luck to both of you. Back to your corners. This is not just a rematch. This is the biggest fight of Czech Congo's life. Redemption on the mind of Tim Johnson, but Czech Congo truly looking to defend his home turf. Here we go! Congo in the red gloves, the southpaw. Tim Johnson in the blue gloves. Back to back, first round knockouts for Johnson. A lot of big, deep breaths before the start of the fight taken by Congo. A monumental moment. 
to say the least. I think it's the first time in the 19 years or so just about that you could say the Czech Congo was nervous yeah. before a fight just based upon where he's at and who he's in front of. I said at the top of the show, John, there might be a tear or two. I don't know if we saw one, but I think if anything, it was close. But it was a good thing. Nice job with that rear kick. Yeah, that front push kick, that was really nice. It got some distance. There's the difference you see right there. That was the same situation that Tim Johnson would keep going forward in and overextend, and that's where he was making his mistakes. You saw him. He started to go in, threw a shot, backed off, reset. Don't. Just let the fight come to you. Don't force it. Congo 10-1-1 one, no contest since his loss to the former Bellator heavyweight champion Vitaly Minikoff, which he avenged at Bellator 216. Top position for Johnson early. Yeah, he lost a five-round championship fight to Minikoff, but then came back and won that three-round, which allowed him to maintain that undefeated streak. Congo is a guy, when you're watching him fight, he is usually able to be in control of the fight. Now, this is a great takedown for Johnson, and he's trying to do something with it, but he's saying that Congo is holding his glove. I don't know if that's true. Congo's got such big hands and such a strong grip, he might be, he's just able to hold on to that big wrist. Czech Congo has been training in Huntington Beach for many years now. Tiki Gosen in his corner, like always, here tonight in Paris. He needs to be very careful of allowing Tim to step over and get full mount on him there. He's trying to use that cage, get his back up against the cage to work himself back to a standing position. Nice little chop elbow by Tim Johnson. Tim's fun to talk to when we bring up these back-to-back first-round knockouts, saying, trust me, guys, <laughs> I'm not going to get carried away. This is my game, wrestling, beating people up on the ground. I, I'm not Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm not Mike Tyson. I'm Tim Johnson. Well, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, but, you know, and you, you, you've seen. How many times have you seen guys that are wrestlers all of a sudden get a couple knockouts, and all of a sudden they're Mike Tyson? Right. And so it's good when you have a guy, oh, no, I know who I am and what I am. And that's smart. This is where he is outstanding. He can control. Same thing he did against Matt Mitrione. Take a look at what's occurring here, Mike. Yep, those are big shots. Big shots. You can only take so many. That's a heavy uh, weight. Congo's in trouble. Yeah, he's, he's working hard to get himself back to a point where he can stand up. Nice job by Czech Congo to withstand that and get himself back to this position. Got to figure, Tim Johnson, two-time All-American D2 wrestler, he can wrestle. Now, Congo has turned himself into a very good wrestler, yes. but you can't compare the two. It, it, it is different, and that ride, the ability to drive that weight and, and make him carry the weight, that can be exhausting. Congo able to wall walk and throws a nice knee. Final minute of round one. Tim Johnson got some good shots in with the ground and pound. He got a lot of big shots in. That was a really good moment for Tim Johnson. This entire round, Congo was able to get himself back to his feet and landed a couple of good knees. But right now, Tim Johnson is still in control of this round by far. Nice heavy knee to that thigh, that quad. It just starts to tighten up, and what it's going to do, it's going to limit his movement later on in the fight. <laughs> Czech Congo is the owner of one of the greatest comebacks in MMA history, a fight in which it looked like Pat Berry was going to knock him out, and then all of a sudden, uh-uh, that wasn't the case. So don't ever count out Czech Congo. Yeah, that was Dan Mergulata as his referee, so I'm sure he's happy to see him back in the cage with him. <laughs> Here's Tim Johnson entering in, he gets a hold of the legs. Now that was based off of the kick that Czech Congo tried to land. It was just good timing by Tim Johnson. 
And then once he was on top, you saw some of the heavy blows that he was able to land. Those blows to the side of the head, especially the ones that come under the arm, those hurt, you see immediately. Check Congo trying to posture himself up. He's climbing back up to a position where he can get back to his feet. Good job by both men in this, but Tim Johnson is the one that's delivering the damage. Tim told us physically it's always been there. It's my mental game that has changed. A new mindset and confidence coming in to this rematch. Of course, the main objective for Czech Congo is to get his arm raised in this, the biggest fight of his professional career. Round two. Okay, round two, gentlemen, let's go. Push. Good first five minutes for Johnson. And partners, you said it was off the kick in which Johnson put Congo on his back. Which will make Czech Congo think about when am I gonna kick again? It's not that he won't, but he's gonna start to now think about it more about when am I gonna do it because I don't want that same situation to occur. Oh, nice again. Nice right hand, and that's what he has hurt guys with. Tim Johnson coming over the top with that right hand. And the thing to think about, Mike, is Tim Johnson is not a left-handed person. He is a right-handed person, but he wrestled with that lead leg being his right leg, so he's going to utilize a southpaw stance in the stand-up. So when he's landing that overhand right, it's got power. Natural right-hander who utilizes the southpaw stance, as John talked about, which also, he told us, sets up his left cross. He moved to Las Vegas and Extreme Couture, spent a lot of time over the last few years with big country Roy Nelson, and you can't get much better than sparring and working with Francis Naganu. He did that after the first fight against this man, Czech Congo, and what a difference it has been for Tim Johnson. Oh, we've seen such a huge difference in his performances and what he's doing as far as the fight IQ, being smart, and that does come, his sparring partners, you know, he's got guys like Roy Nelson, but he's got Ray Cepho in there. Yes. A beautiful kickboxer, a guy that's got heavy hands, heavy kicks, and can teach Tim Johnson things that, you know, it takes a while to learn those. But once you learn them, and you bring them in the cage with you, now things start to change. <laughs> so this is normally the area that Czech Congo is doing well against his opponent. Normally he's putting his opponent against the cage and utilizing a really strong MMA wrestling game to just beat up the legs, slow his opponent down, and work them into making mistakes that he takes advantage of and gets his win. Tim Johnson is now taking that same game plan and bringing it together. Got his hands together for the takedown. Congo's utilizing what we would call a 100% grip on that. If he had an inside hook, it would help him in actually trying to turn and reverse the position. It's going to be tough with a guy as big, strong, and heavy as Tim Johnson, knowing, understanding how to maintain balance and base. Just past the midway point of this three-round fight. Forty-three fights, seven different countries, 7,063 days since his professional debut. You see Tim Johnson sitting on top of that left leg, which is trapping Congo. He's trying to get to his feet, but that left leg was trapped underneath Tim Johnson. That's what kept him down. As soon as he gets that knee to the ground, now he can get up. Nice strong knee inside from the fence. That's not easy to throw. That was well done by Congo. Now it's Congo putting Johnson's back on the fence. Holding the fence right now. <laughs> Don't blame him. I'd do the same thing. Controlling the wrist. Oh, Congo going for the takedown now. You see him trying to reach for his other hand, trying to collapse his hands together. Once he can get just his fingers to touch and start to pull them together, he'll get that nice Nicely job by Congo. Johnson had that wide base. Congo worked through it. Tim Johnson back up. Good back and forth. Both guys doing 
things in this technically right, all smart. Good underhook right now by Congo, bringing the knee. Notice he, he moves the arm out of the way so he can throw that knee. Nice little short right hand by Congo. 30 seconds on the clock right now here in round two. Congo letting oh, the hands go. That right hand followed by the left. That touched Johnson right on the button. And again, same spot. Right under the right eye of Tim Johnson, the big right hand of Czech Congo landed two, maybe three times. And again, those knees to the body. Round two in the books. Here was the takedown by Congo. You saw him get his hands together, lifts up on the hips, get him, gets him light, brings him down, wasn't able to keep him down. That was Tim Johnson getting back to his feet fairly quickly, but here's the punch sequence. Nice right hand. That's the one you talked about, hit right at the right eye, and then comes back, throws another and touches. Nice left hand following it. All right, Big John, your scorecard after two rounds. Man, this is a tough one to go. There's no doubt Tim Johnson's got that first round easily. You look at the second round, and he did a lot of good work in the beginning of the round. Congo landed those big you know, shots towards the end that we just watched. And it's the question, are the judges going to give more credit to what happened more in the fight, which is the grappling, or are they going to go right to those strikes which, that they like so much? I would tell you this fight right now possibly is even going into the third round. Damage is a word you always use first when you are talking about your unofficial scorecard. There you go. And I see a little bit under Tim's eye and he, that occurred in the second round. And those shots affected him. You could see it. Yes. Five minutes remain. Our main event. Czech Congo finally fighting at home. Red gloves for Congo. Blue gloves for Johnson. It may very well be 1-1. One, one. You'd like to see Congo come out in this third round and go after Johnson the way that he was near the end of the second round there. And he just opened up with that big right hand throwing it. This is the Congo you want to see. If you, you, know, you want this fight, got, you got to go get it. This is exactly how you get it. You've waited nearly two decades as a professional fighter for this. You got four minutes or less to do your thing here at home in France. And Tim Johnson being calm, collected, patient, he got hit. Don't worry about it. I don't have to get it back right now, right away. Let me find my spot. All good. Started wrestling at a very young age, age five, coming from southern Minnesota. His dad was a wrestler. John talked about Big left success hand. in college, and the hands have really come a long way. He landed a beautiful left hand right on Congo. That's what drove Congo back into the cage and allowed him to come in with his clinch. A little bit of the um, extreme couture grind, if you will. Huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, yep. Dirty boxing, man. It hurts. I think the owner of that gym utilized that a little bit. <laughs> This has been, you know, when you watch what occurred in the first fight, no matter what anyone says, it's always in the back of your mind when you had a performance like Congo had against Tim Johnson or in reverse, Tim Johnson had against Congo. It's like, man, I can't let that happen again. And that sometimes can hold you back from performing well. And that has definitely not occurred. Tim Johnson has done an outstanding job tonight in this fight. He has made this fight the way he's wanted to be for the most part. Congo's had his moments where he's done really well, but every time Tim gets him against the cage, those knees to the thigh, you'll see Congo landing a knee every now and then to the inside, but Tim's the one that's actually winning most of this. Trying to lace a leg. Midway point of the third and final round. Good, uh, good knee inside by Congo again. The one prior lifted Johnson off the canvas. Congo may be 45 years biologically, 
but you take a look at it, man. That guy's like 23. No question about it. You just made him Michael Jordan. <laughs> which is about as big a compliment as you can give an athlete. Yeah, that's pretty good. Two minutes. Anybody's fight. It is. Right now, you, you, you got to step on the gas. You got to start putting that pedal closer to that floorboard and start doing things that are going to make it to where you are the one controlling this fight. You're the one moving forward, landing the big shots or going after it. So the judges, at least, if it doesn't end, they're going to say, oh, I like the actions, and I think that he landed the better, more damaging blows. Check definitely looks like the fresher fighter with 90 seconds on the clock. Check's got that right hand that he's throwing from his hip, but Tim is not seeing it when he throws. And so it's getting close to the mark. And if you're Czech Congo, John, and you're finally fighting at home, the one thing you don't want to live with, win or lose, is that I didn't let go, that I didn't do everything I could to earn the biggest victory in my life. 60 seconds remain. Yeah, you don't want to have, you know, if if you're going to end up with this fight, you got to go with nothing left in the gas tank yes. when that bell rings. Another solid knee to the midsection of his opponent. He has landed some really solid knees. Johnson tried to answer. Johnson's had the big knees to the legs, and Czech Congo has landed the knees to that solar plex area, to the abdomen. You see Tim Johnson, he's accepted them all well. None of them have really affected him, but you know they hurt. He waited 20 years. There's 20 seconds left. There's the Muay Thai. The plum clinch, we'll see what he does with it. He's trying. Big price. it's hard to swing your opponent when you're tired and you got your butt up against the cage. They go the full 15 minutes in the rematch. The first fight lasted 68 seconds. It is now in the hands of the judges. There's that big right I said he was swinging. You could see it didn't bring the hand all the way around, but that landed cleanly. When he was throwing that thing, he was throwing it all the way from the United States coming back to France. But then Tim Johnson had his moments, landed good little shots inside. That was a clean shot landed by Congo as Tim got spun around. A lot of shots with the knees, both to the body and to the legs. Both guys gave it all. Check. Check. That is what makes this sport great. That is why Bellator is in Paris, France. Judges are rendering their decision. It is in who will have their arm raised here in our main event. Let's find out. Here, once again, is Craig Steven. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in the Bellator cage, we go to our three scoring judges. And I do think, before we declare the result, that you would like to show your appreciation for both these fighters in the ring. <laughs> Judge Douglas Crosby sees the contest 29-28. Tim Johnson. Jaron Vallel, he sees the contest 29-28. Czech Congo. Salvatore Di Mato sees the contest 29-28. For the winner by split decision from Lamberton, Minnesota, Tim.
Tim Johnson. Tim Johnson by split decision. In what we said throughout the fight, John was such a close fight, such a battle. Tim Johnson wins the rematch in the hometown of Czech Congo. He will talk to Gary. Tim, it was a tough, grinding fight. Did you think you'd won? I knew it was going to be close, and I know I'm fighting in his home country. So uh, I was, if it came down to split decision, I did, thought maybe I was going to have another Ireland on my hands, and uh, now I cannot get it pulled out. But I wasn't going to be surprised if it went either way, honestly. Uh, first round, I'm going to definitely give myself. Second round, check probably. He probably got the better of me in that round. In round three, there was a lot of pushing and shoving back and forth. And I, I honestly, if, if they would have said check, I would have been like, I can understand that as well. I don't feel like either one of us dominated this fight. Well, you came into this contest with two first round knockouts and you've got three on the trot now, uh, victories. Do you think you deserve a heavyweight title shot? Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> uh, you know, I think every, every athlete's got got their little window when things start lining up for them. And I think the past three, four moments kind of showed myself that I might be in it right now and they might not come back around again. So I got to take advantage of it when I can. Well, you spoiled the party in a way in Paris for Czech tonight, but many congratulations. Right, thank you. Timothy Johnson. <laughs> Czech. Czech, I know we've got to stay socially distanced, obviously. I've known you a long time. We never got to see you fight in Paris in your prime, yet you got something special out of yourself tonight. How do you feel? Ah, disappointed for sure. I'm really sorry for this defeat. I feel so tomorrow to, uh, to end the last race will be tough, but I'm going to try. You know, I got the opportunity to sign with Bellator and just to finish and try to accomplish what I try to do. Yeah, I'm just, just disappointed. Je suis vraiment désolé, hein. Bon, là maintenant, j'ai encore signé avec le Bellator. Il me reste encore des combats à faire. Je vais tâcher de revenir une dernière fois. Et voilà, on va faire ce qu'il faut. Hein. Vive la France. Et on est des guerriers. Toutes les banlieues parisiennes. Toutes les provinces de France. Tous ceux qui souffrent. On est là, on représente. Et quoi qu'il arrive, vous ne jamais lâcher l'affaire. OK, vous avez un rêve, un, un goal, un but, allez-y. Et surtout, ne laissez personne vous dire que vous n'êtes pas capable de faire quoi que ce soit. Parce que si ça avait été le cas, aujourd'hui, je ne serais pas là. There's basically no quit in Czech Congo. He'll come out again to La Marseillez. Lovely to see you, Czech. Come back again soon. Thank you. Disappointed but still embracing this monumental moment, giving credit to his opponent. Czech Congo defeated by split decision in the rematch with Tim Johnson, who, oh, by the way, after his loss against Czech Congo, took a fight on an opponent change day off against the former champion, Vitaly Minikov. Uh, just in case you were wondering. Back to Gareth and Liam McCourt. Well, I'm here with Leah McCourt. Leah, there's no quit in this guy. He, as he said, he wants to come back and fight again. What did you make of Czech's performance against Timothy Johnson tonight? Yeah, you know, it was such a back and forth fight. You know, I think it could have went either way. Um, definitely, Timothy was a different Timothy we've seen from the first fight. He came out, he, he was confident. He put Czech in the back foot from the first round. And, you know, he that first round, he had him up against the cage. And then Czech showed so much heart coming back, you know, he was in the ground, he was getting beat up, and, and that, that, that's that you can't teach. You know, he was he was hurt on the floor, and he grinded and got back up again. Exactly. You you saw that resilience in him, which we haven't seen always with Czech. He was definitely lifted by the Parisian crowd, wasn't he? Yeah. The thing is about Czech, I would like to have seen him to be more aggressive in that second and third round, because I think when, when his knees were going, in this stand-up, in the dist I mean, Tim Johnson tried to take the center of the cage, but when Czech 
pushed on him, I thought he was making success. Yeah, he was letting his hands go. If he had maybe uh, been a bit more vicious, a bit more active, he, he might, might have got the knockout. But Tenley did a great job tonight and definitely looked like a different fighter from the first fight. Yeah, and there's, there's every, every suspicion that he will get uh, a world title fight at heavyweight in Bellator. He certainly d deserves it. We're going to the break now, and we will be going back with, we'll coming back with Michael Venom Page against Ross Houston. Don't miss this one. Michael Venom Page, the great knockout artist, and Houston, the man who grinds out victories. We'll be back shortly. Yeah, earlier.
show. It's been the MVP show since he came to the Bellator. Like a brutal dance routine. I'm taking over everybody. Everybody. Well, earlier tonight, to that man, Michael Venom Page, who makes highlight reel knockouts part of his daily recipe, was in action against Ross Houston, the undefeated champion from Cage Warriors from Scotland, who was coming over and was saying that he would be the man to take him out. Take a look at this. Right now, they are two fighters looking for their next Ready? professional win. Ready? Here we go! Fight contracted at 175 pounds. MVP in the red gloves. Houston in the blue gloves. It'll be very interesting right off the bat to see how much Ross Houston is just going to sit there and try to bring Page into his game, try to actually counter the counter striker. Which is what he told us he is going to attempt to do, at least, John, earlier in the week when we spoke to him. But you need to be careful because you have to present problems for your opponent. If you're not presenting a problem, things can go bad quickly. Seven and a half inch reach advantage could be a problem for Ross Houston because that's what MVP possesses. That side stance, light on his feet, hands down low. Sometimes what that side stance does with those hands is because they're low, it's hard for you to actually see that punch coming until it's a little bit too late and it hits you when you would think that it would not. And he's able to control distance and range so well, much like we talk about the veteran Lyoto Machida all the time. I am impressed with the fact that Ross Houston right now is being very patient. He's taking his time. He's not trying to force anything because that can happen, especially your first time in the Bellator cage coming from a different you know, promotion. This is your first fight here. You want to impress. You want to do well. So you make mistakes. He's being very calm, very relaxed, and that shows you know, that fight IQ. Well, partner, he's staying true to his word because he said he put a lot of pressure on himself during his amateur fights, and it cost him on more than one occasion. He was too worried about what people were going to think of his performance just missing with that punch was MVP and now he just fights his own fight lets it come to him which is what you need to do against the guy at the caliber of MVP yeah, that right hand actually that that hit Ross Houston he felt it and you can see that he actually stopped took a moment to just collect himself he's trying to measure exactly where MVP is at and how he can attack with that distance. When MVP comes in to do that attack, you're seeing that Ross Houston is trying to look for that attack and counter it. Fifth Dan kickboxing black belt, Michael Venom Page, whose father, Curtis, was a three-time kickboxing champion. Passed a few years ago on Boxing Day, and obviously Michael misses him dearly, fights for his spirit every time he enters the cage. And you can see just with that kick that Ross Houston attempted it was off by a di that distance is giving him problems but this is exactly where i think he has a very good chance of winning this fight bringing it to the ground utilizing that good ground game that he has good shoulder pressure right now we talked about the strength that ross houston possesses john yeah but right now in the position that he's at he's in what we call you know he's inside control but he's trapped. That head is trapped by Michael Venom Page. He's feeling the pressure. I'm not saying it's going to put him out or anything, but he's feeling it, and it is limiting his breathing also. Page now lets that go. Side control for Ross Houston. Very important timing for Ross Houston right now. This is something that trying to bring Neon Belly. He needs to just maintain this control and slowly and systematically get to a position where he can do damage on Venom Page. 
You hear his corner telling him to be very heavy, put the pressure on his opponent. Well, one of the things a lot of people go you know, when they're watching Michael Bennett Page is say, oh, you just take him to the ground. Well, we saw that Cyborg, a guy that Venom Page, who is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, he did get Venom Page to the ground and wasn't able to do anything with him there. So it's not like Michael Page has no ground game. He knows what's going on down there. And he left on the wrong side of the 2016 World MMA Knockout of the Year. The referee was average in that fight, by the way. He's absolutely average. average. Glad he retired. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell one of the things that's occurred here is Ross Houston's had this great position. Right back to half guard, he hasn't been able to do that damage, and that is what you need to do if you get this opportunity, because you want to do something that's going to slow MVP down. Big John, we're going to see a second round. Right here on CBS Sports Network, Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy, MMA from Paris, France, from the country of France for the very first time. Thank you to those who helped to make it happen. Thank you to Scott Coker for his persistence in becoming number one once again and bringing the Bellator cage to Paris. A miracle has happened, Mike. Michael Venom Page has his hands up. Yes. <laughs> Which means Ross Houston has gotten his attention. You talked to me about it before, John. You said when he gets really loose and Anderson Silva-like is when he's extremely confident and doesn't feel any fear, now his hands are in a different spot, and that is because Ross Houston made a few statements in the first five minutes. Exactly, and he's, but Venom Page did land a beautiful right hand. That stunned Ross Houston a little bit. But we are seeing a difference in the style. The joking is gone, which is telling you, this is a tell that I see in Michael Page all the time. When he knows, hey, I'm in against a guy that this guy's good, he starts to get rid of all of that a little bit, and he starts to get a little more serious, and that's what you're seeing right now. On your unofficial scorecard, who got round one? You know, it's going to be a tough round, because if you look at the ground part, Ross wasn't able to do anything. He did zero damage down there. Now, it was not the most, you look at the time, it might be the judges going with Venom Page. He landed the better strikes, and that took place more. But again, I could see a judge giving it to Ross Houston based upon having him on the ground, having position. But it's more about damage, not position. Damage first, then cage control. So a very close round one. Red gloves for 17 and 1. Michael Venom Page, 13 of those wins inside the Bellator cage. Debut here in Paris for Ross Houston. 8 0 and 1, no contest in his professional career. That was a well-timed entrance by Ross Houston to get inside, tried to drop levels, got inside, gets his hands locked. We'll see what he can do from here now that he's got Page up against the cage. Big shot. And again, this is where people don't give Michael Page credit. They think he's just the stand-up guy. That was a beautiful takedown by Michael Page. He had Ross off balance, brings him down. Now he's landing good shots. 
Ooh. That's right to the back of the head, back of the neck. Yep. Now that is on both because that shot is being thrown. And you see that you, the head is there and it, as it's being thrown. So intent wise, I don't think he intended for that to be. It's just that that's what ended up being the shot that ends up landing. So you can see as Houston's moving a little bit, he's obviously throwing it, but he's trying to go to the side. But as Houston moves his body to his left, that brings that head right into place with the, the hammer fist by MVP. And Todd Anderson perfectly put it, be careful to the back of the head. Just, you know, stating what you just said, Big John, is that it was the movement and bad timing, if you will, for Ross Houston for that strike from MVP. Absolutely, and what it did is, first off, he gave Houston, oh, nice shot by Page again. Good exchange by both of them, but Page got the best of it. But it gives Houston time to recover from it, and it takes him off of the ground. Now they're back in the stand-up, so he gets that advantage back. We got ourselves a fight. Well, this is the this is the fight that I expected. Is that I felt that Michael Venom Page would, at a certain point, say, "I have to respect this guy. He's good. He's strong. He's got good striking." But you're seeing the difference in the speed. There is a difference between Venom Page and Ross Houston in speed, and it's that length and speed that is giving Venom Page right now the advantage in this fight. Nice sprawl. Ross still trying to take him down. And again, wasn't able to, which is telling you, look, MVP is becoming that all-around fighter. He is not this guy that you can just easily take down. Sweeps the leg out. Look where he's at, Mike. Right in him out. out. That was a beautiful statement right there, mister. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was well-timed. And I liked your page against the cage. You're a poet. You don't even know. <laughs> nice move by Ross. He used to move his hips. He's into at least a half guard now. MVP being very careful with these strikes, wisely doing just that as Houston tries to get out of this tough position. But this is the difference, what we saw in the first round compared to what we're seeing here. Even though Venom Page isn't having the positional dominance that you saw with Ross Houston, now he's into at least side control. He is damaging Houston from these positions. See some of the damage under the eye, the right eye of the hitman, Ross Houston. Final 10 seconds of round number two. This round will leave no doubt in the judges' minds. some good moments that was a big left hook by Michael Page there that got Ross Houston's attention you saw the difference in the striking here beautiful left right and then when Michael Venom Page was in positions you saw Houston trying to get into him take him down and Page was able to reverse those Our main event here on CBS Sports Network, Michael Venom Page in the red gloves, blue gloves for Ross Houston. Big round two for MVP. And yeah, no doubt about it, you can see clearly that Michael Venom Page is going to get that round on all the judges' scorecards. So right now, he's either up 2018 on a judges' scorecard or we have an even fight. Starting with those hands up, John, like he did in round two. Now they're a little bit lower. And this is, if when you're looking, I just said we have an even fight. But that's the problem with the scoring of MMA is if you did give the first round to Ross Houston, 
there is a big difference between that first round and the second round because if you're saying well which one was better well obviously Michael Page did a lot better work in the second round than if you were going to give Houston the first round that he did and so it's even on the cards maybe but not even in what we've seen happening inside the cage because you know what I'm going to ask you now not quite enough for a 10-8 right no definitely oh. not enough for a 10-8 That's why every fighter will say, I do not want to leave it in the hands of somebody else. Three other dudes <laughs> making the decision and it's so, my arm being raised. But it's so hard when you're going against someone that is so good in either Ross Houston or... It's not easy to get rid of a good fighter. Absolutely. No denying the durability of Ross Houston. Or Michael Venom Page. Yeah, there's no doubt at this moment now in the fight, Ross Houston is a little bit hesitant. When I talked about that confidence, that confidence has been broken a little bit. He was in positions that he did not expect to be in against Michael Page. And that second round didn't unfold the way that he had played it out in his mind. So he needs to get that confidence back, get back to what he does well, start you know just taking his time, be smart. Same way he got into him before, you know, change levels, time that entrance and get a hold of him and put him back into your world. And Big John, especially with MVP doing some of his damage or the majority of his damage on the ground, which is where Ross Houston, at least on paper, thought that he would have the advantage in this fight. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. When someone does something, you don't, ex you don't think he's going to be difficult for you in that position. And all of a sudden, it's a different world than you thought. It's a, it's a confidence killer. MVP just sees those spins coming from, well, all the way back in the United States. <laughs> and no disrespect to Ross, that's just MVP's many years of competing. Ross Houston with the wizard there trying to bring him over. Again, Michael using good technique, has that hand inside, brings him against the cage here. And you're taking a look. Right now we have a 50-50 position. Both have an underhook, both have the over. Who's going to do something with the position? Is Page going to try to bring him down again? Because he did good work in the second round on the ground. MVP has only gone the distance three times in his professional career. 3-0 in those fights. Houston has had moments where he has taken this fight, John, to where he wanted into what he had hoped would be his world. But I'll tell you what, Michael Venom Page, his globe has grown. And you can see the all-around skill set just continuing to mature. Yeah, well, it's obvious that, you know, the guys that he's working out with at the London Shoot Fighters, you know, he's making them better and they're making him better. And, you know, he has got a ground game. You can sit there and say whatever you want. Is he a submission master? No. He's not a submission master, but man, he is proficient on the ground. Defensively, he's good, and offensively, when it comes to ground and pound, he lays down heavy strikes. Look at how hard Ross Houston is working here, trying to get this takedown. He should go to that double leg again, right with where his legs are at. He's trying, back to the single leg. He's be careful of that guillotine. Final 20 seconds of this fight. Michael Page ends up in the top position. Ross working his way back out. Our main event will go the distance. We need two more rounds, Mike. Yes, we do. <laughs> There was some respect for Ross Houston. You could definitely see it from Michael Venom Page. No doubt about it. You look at you know what Ross Houston brings. He is a very skilled fighter. He's well-rounded. He took some big shots, never wavered from him. 
kept himself in there, kept trying to get Page to the position that he felt he'd have the advantage. I just don't think it was enough in this one. Judges rendering their decision. Craig Steven has it. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges, Salzamato 29-28, both judges Jennifer Lell and Doug Crosby 30-27. Winner by unanimous decision, Michael Venom Page. It's very interesting tonight because Michael Venom Page said afterwards that he went to plan Z because he couldn't get any purchase, that he couldn't grip well in the stand-up tonight, so he had to go to a different game. We saw a different Michael Venom Page tonight, didn't we? Yeah, Ross gave him a bit of trouble in the first round, but you know, he came back, he came through and he showed his skill. He showed really nice grappling exchanges. He was able to nullify what Ross was trying to do in the ground. And you know, he had, he had nice switches and, and he showed that he has got a good wrestling, good ground game. And he was able to reverse some of the uh, cage work. So it was, it was nice to see that side of it. Absolutely it was. Well, we have, if you are a fan of spectacular finishes and even more spectacular celebrations, don't miss the fight after the break. Terry Brazier against Eve Lon Du, I do not kid you. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the cage from France, Yves Longeau.
So up next, a much anticipated lightweight bout between Terry Brazier and Eve Londu. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the cage from France, Yves Longeau. Just off of that moment, had to let him do his thing. But Yves Landu is a incredible athlete. He is a good fighter. He's very athletic, like I said. Not real technical at times because he gets crazy in the fight. But he definitely is a handful of the cage. And this guy, Mike, loves the Kimura submission. If you see him grab an arm, he is going to try to take that thing home with him. Eva. Londu, his nickname, you know, comes from the time in which he was a break dancer. That might be some of his athleticism. And when he started fighting, people used to say, if you didn't know who Eve was, so now you know. <laughs> well, he is enjoying himself the whole time. And you gotta love when someone is just passionate, having fun with coming out here. Think about how cool it would be now walking down that ramp, putting on the show that he is now. All he needs to do is finish it off with a big time show inside the cage. He also, as we had earlier, a member of the Snake fight team led by Cyril the Snake Diabati. Was an assistant coach on season nine with Dan Henderson back in the day. Trained in the States on multiple occasions. Four-time kickboxing world champion. And one of his veteran fighters in, you know, Eve Londu looking for his 16th career win. I know. Making his walk to the cage from England, Terry Brazier. Former two division Bama champion at 155 and 170. Came to Bellator as a double weight champion. The guy that many considered the best lightweight in the UK. Things haven't gone the way that he wants them to go yet inside the Bellator cage, but he thinks they're gonna start to head that way. One of the men he works with, our good buddy, Dan Hardy. Well, Terry Brazier is a good fighter. He is good everywhere. I think it was more the outside things that were going on in his life started yes. to take his attention. And as a fighter, sometimes you have to be selfish. You have to, you know, be about what you're doing. And when you have outside interference and things not going well in your life, it can take that commitment of training and everything away. I think that started to affect Terry's career. Now he's back on track. He's happy. And it should be this performance tonight that tells us, is Terry Brazier back to being the guy he was before?
set for you know and the dominator a lightweight fight our tail of the tape for this last preliminary matchup brazier 11 and 3 Londu 15 and 8 33 year old against 34 year old brazier much taller he has a three inch reach advantage looking to show tonight why bellator brought him in expecting him to be a big star here's craig stevens well ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the action inside the bellator cage coming to you from the accor arena paris france bellator mma continuing with our euro series bonus coverage this is three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first in the blue corner at five foot eight and weighing in at 154.2 pounds. His professional record, 15 wins, only eight defeats with eight wins inside the distance from Mo. Fighting out of Paris, France, Eve, you know, lands you. And across the Bellator cage in the red corner, standing six foot tall and weighing in at 155 pounds even. His professional record, 11 wins, only three defeats, seven wins inside the distance. This former para stands before you, a two-division Bama champion, fighting out of London, England, Terry, the Dominator, Brazier. And a referee, Mr. Dan Mergliotta. Dan Mergliotta, our referee for this lightweight fight. Live from Paris, France. Terry Brazier and Yves Londu. We are underway. Red gloves for Brazier. You know, in the blue gloves. Terry closes the distance immediately. Big kick attempt by Lanju. Wasn't able to stop Razor. He gets the takedown. Looking for that Kimura grip. Remember I talked about the Kimura. He you goes indeed. for it all the time. Terry needs to be careful. This guy has got the ability to create. There it is. Turns him with it. Gets the top position. He will not let go of that thing. He did let go of it. But he, all the time, every time I watch him, that Kimura grip is what he goes to. Fine, 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 fine. That was a little south of the border. Yes. Right up between. Didn't hit him that hard, you could tell. But got to give the guy a little bit of the break. Let him feel like he's back. That's what Dan Mergalot is doing right now. Ready? Ready? Let's go, fight. The battle continues. First minute of the fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Londu will switch his stance back and forth. He's southpaw here. Orthodox stance for Brazier. Good counter. Beautiful right hand by Brazier. Brazier just being very calm, calculating. You're going to see that Landu likes to be sometimes a little bit crazy. He'll open up with crazy spinning kicks, back fists. When he's feeling good, he'll do all kinds of crazy techniques. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do against Terry Brazier. Quick kick there. Got it up high. Nice. Leaving that chin open. And when you see when he's starting to exit, watch to see his chin starts to come up as he leans his head back. That's not a good sign because all it takes is Terry Brazier to time that moment, land a shot. It's going to have a big effect. Ooh, oh, just this. And one. a smile on the face. And a swing and a miss. And, yep. And Yves Landu said, you know, that almost hit me. <laughs> 
A little Superman punch, but short. Oh, he's out! It is all over! That's yes. the explosive right. stuff I'm talking yes. about! You know what I'm talking about now! Wow! That's what I had seen from him. He will start to go and do things that you go, look what he's doing right here. That's break dancing, baby! God bless him. But he is explosive at times. Wow! That was a huge knee. And as he would say, now you know. <laughs> I, I think we do. I told you he was a great dancer. <laughs> Watch this. Comes up, lying knee. Boom! Right on the butt. Brazier is out. Switch knee. That left knee just landed flush. A beautiful technique by Yves Landu. Right at the top of the forehead, but it just put Terry out. You can see he can't control his body. He's stiff. This is what I had seen by Landu. He'll make those big, exciting, explosive movements. Sometimes it would work for him. Sometimes caught him in bad places. But today, that worked to perfection. When asked what his greatest strength was, he said, my abilities to get explosive and bring a show and a fight with lots of action like a MVP, a Michael Bennett Page. That was, uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty MVP-like. That was very much so. Frazier, sitting there, you see him arguing. He doesn't know what happened. No. He got knocked out. It's, it's a moment that's gone to him, and he doesn't realize that now the fight's over and he lost. So he's questioning everything. It happens all the time. It's, it's always sad to see. That's why he's unsure of what's going on right now. Not only did he catch him, John, but Terry Brashear was kind of leaning in, looking for a potential takedown as well. So unfortunate timing for the Dominator as Eve Londu earns his victory in his Bellator debut in spectacular fashion. Let's watch it again. Yeah, you can watch right here. This knee hits him right in the side of the head, the forehead right there. And you can see by, look at Brazier's body language. He is stiff. He is disconnected right here. He has no, see how his arm is stiff? No ability to control his body. He doesn't know that happened, though. And that's why you're seeing sometimes fighters, when that, that happens, you see them arguing and complaining. They just don't understand what occurred because it's a moment in their life that they weren't there for. Well, he had a ton of fun walking in, and he's going to have a ton of fun walking out. If you didn't know, now you know. To make it official, Craig Steven. Well, ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Dan Mergliotta stops the action. Two minutes, 18 seconds of round number one. The winner by KO from Paris, France, Eve. You know. What a, what a KO. Don't forget, October the 15th, this Thursday, the featherweight champion Chris Cyborg makes her first title defense against top contender Arlene Angerfist Blenko. But from us, from Paris, it's bon nuit and good night.